Good morning and welcome to this service of prayer and reflection on Wednesday the 30th of September 2020. We are now in the harvest season so this weekend Lathbury will be celebrating their harvest service at 5pm on Sunday the 4th of October and in Newport Pagnell we have a communion service for harvest at 10.30 on Sunday the 11th of October in St Peter and St Paul. If you would like to come to that service, then please do look at the website and Pew's News to ensure that you book your place as social distancing must apply. This year we are having a special collection for the MK Food Bank and the details of how you can donate can be found on the parish website and in Pew's News. Please do give as generously as you are able to do so because there will be far more people needing to use the food bank this uh, autumn and winter, sadly. Some of the material used today comes from the Celtic tradition and the format of the service will be slightly different. I hope that it will inspire and reassure you that in these uncertain times due to the pandemic, God is a loving God who is always there for us. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights up day. Chase away the dark and all shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. Our God is the God of all, the God of heaven and earth, of the sea and the rivers, the God of the sun and of the moon, and of all the stars, the God of the lofty mountains and of the lowly valleys. He has his dwelling around heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is. A reflection entitled God's Laws. Where are God's laws? Are they found in a book? Is the gospel a book of law? What are God's laws? Are they a set of rules? Is salvation blind obedience? God's law is in our hearts. It is our desire for goodness. The gospel helps that desire to grow. Salvation is its harvest. Today's reading is taken from Psalm 119, verses 57 through to 80. Now, if I wasn't limited by the realms of technology, I would read it now and again later, but there isn't time for that. So if you would like to read it through for yourself, then please pause this recording now. Psalm 119, verses 57 through to 80. If you ever want to know all those irritating habits and mannerisms you may have, you've only got to spend some time with a young child who will mimic you. Does that sound familiar? As a child, I can remember my brother and I imitating my grandmother's humming. It was nothing spectacular, just the same two notes repeated endlessly, or so it seemed. I myself have been told that when I concentrate, I sometimes stick my tongue out. I can see those of you who know me better may be watching me more closely now, or maybe I no longer concentrate. Returning to the very young children, they do copy adults. My brother and I were a little older and knew exactly what we were doing when we imitated my grandmother, and fortunately she had a good sense of fun. But for very young children, as far as they are concerned, they are learning or they think they are learning, how to be an adult by copying what an adult does. Once you've had a young child in the house, you soon realise how careful you have to be with your words and actions, because they are waiting to pick up and try out a new word or skill. And it'll always be the ones you don't want them to pick up that they'll discover first. When my daughter was young, I can remember showing her a chrysalis in which we found in the garden. Unbeknown to me, as I was explaining to her what a chrysalis was and showing her, we heard a little voice next door repeat the word 
chrysalis. At the time, the young boy next door was that bit younger than my daughter, at the stage where a child's vocabulary grows so rapidly. Needless to say, that was the in word for that summer, and we heard it through the fence a fair bit. But it is a lovely word for a child, chrysalis. Quite rightly, you may be wondering what any of this has got to do with Psalm 119. Well, just as children learn from watching and listening to their parents, grandparents, teachers and carers, as adults, we learn in just the same way, although it doesn't always come as naturally when we're older. There are many workplace training schemes and apprenticeships where one can learn a new skill through watching and spending time with another who is experienced in that particular trade or skill. It is no different with our spiritual development. We have the gift of the Bible, written down and recorded for us, inspired by the Word of God. Right in the heart of the 66 books is the book of Psalms, the poetry and prayers of the Bible. The psalm set for morning prayer today in the Anglican lectionary is part of Psalm 119. Psalm 119, as you may know, has 176 verses, the longest in the Psalter. In the original Hebrew, it was written as an acrostic poem, where each of the 22 sections starts with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That, of course, is lost in the English translation. But the context applies as much today as it has throughout the generations. The particular sections pointed for today verses 57 to 80, three sections, speak of how we should be obedient to God and how to live through afflictions and to build good relationships with everyone, which seems very appropriate at the moment when we don't know what's happening with the pandemic and a lot of people are suffering. Provided they are praised and rebuked as appropriate, children will learn to differentiate between right and wrong from adults around them. As they grow up, as parents, we hope that they will learn how to cope with those disappointments of life and how to develop good relationships with those they know well and with strangers. Well, God, our Heavenly Father, wants exactly the same for us as we grow in our faith. Psalm 119 is really a prayer with each, which each generation can make their own, asking God for his help to learn from him. Young children will learn from those closest to them, as adults, we learn new skills by spending time with someone more experienced than ourselves. Also, I expect when you first fell in love and wanted to get to know someone better, you desperately wanted to spend time with them every spare moment. So it is no different in our relationship with God. If we are to get, him to, get to know him better, we want to spend time with him, or we should want to spend time with him, and do everything he says just as children want to be like their parents. The opening verse in this version I shall read shortly is, You, Lord, are my choice and I will obey you. It Doesn't that sound like two lovers? Somebody wants to be with somebody and wants to do everything they, they say? It goes on to say that I pay careful attention as you lead me and I follow you closely. Is that what you want? That's what God wants for us all, to be obedient to him, to follow him and to live our lives for him, not forgetting that he cares for us and wants the best for us. It is all contained within these 24 verses of the psalm. In the second section for today, the psalmist goes on to say, I am your servant, Lord, and you have kept your promise to treat me with kindness. But the psalmist also acknowledges that we all make mistakes, which is absolutely normal. And God knows that. But we must learn from them. The psalmist says, once you corrected me for not obeying you, but now I obey. See how you learn from your mistakes. As we journey through life from that small toddler copying our parents to the teenager who possibly feels that they know best, a time comes when we look back and realise that maybe our parents were right when we went our own way, disobeying them or not acting on their advice. Quite often it is sadly too late when we 
can go back to our parents and say, you were right all those years ago, as we begin to understand the reasoning behind their advice and discipline as we grow older and wiser. I grew up in Surrey and when deciding where to study at university, I really wanted to stay relatively close to home. It took my father a long time to persuade me that it would be better to go further afield. Perhaps I should add that I had a good relationship with my father, but he was thinking of what was best for me. In the end, I went to the other extreme and studied at Aberystwyth on the Welsh coast, pretty much as far away as I could get. I thoroughly enjoyed myself there and my parents didn't see me at all during term time. But the point was that now, when I look back, I know that it was the right decision. Again, the psalmist says, when you corrected me, it did me good because it taught me to study your laws. Your decisions are correct and you were right to punish me. These verses of the psalm are very much about keeping God's commandments, living our lives according to his word and obeying him, but also acknowledging how gracious he is and acknowledging his love for us and how he does keep his promises even when we stray from his ways. Today I have chosen to read from the contemporary English translation of Psalm 119. I'm going to read it fairly slowly with time for you to reflect on what you hear and think about what I've been saying and I would hope that you will reread it and pray the words yourself. Make it your prayer for this week. And I shall finish with a reflection, time to change. So Psalm 119, verses 57 to 80. You, Lord, are my choice, and I will obey you. With all my heart, I beg you to be kind to me, just as you have promised. I pay careful attention as you lead me, and I follow you closely. As soon as you command, I do what you say. Evil people may set a trap, but I obey your law. Your laws are so fair that I wake up and praise you in the middle of the night. I choose as my friends everyone who worships you and follows your teachings. Our Lord, your love is seen all over the world. Teach me your laws. I am your servant, Lord, and you have kept your promise to treat me with kindness. Give me wisdom and good sense. I trust your commands. Once you corrected me for not obeying you, but now I obey you. You are kind hearted and you do good things. So teach me your laws. My reputation is being ruined by conceited liars, but with all my heart I follow your teachings. Those liars have no sense, but I find happiness in your law. When you corrected me, it did me good, because it taught me to study your laws. I would rather obey you than to have a thousand pieces of silver and gold. You created me and put me together. Make me wise enough to learn what you have commanded. Your worshippers will see me and they will be glad that I trust your word. Your decisions are correct and you will right to punish me. I serve you, Lord. Comfort me with your love, just as you have promised. I love to obey your law. Have mercy and let me live. Put down those proud people who hurt me with their lies because I have chosen to study your teachings. Let your worshippers come to me so they will learn to obey your rules. Let me truly respect your laws so I won't be ashamed. Time to change. There is always time to change. Dull, dreary sin can last for years, but goodness can come in a flash. 
The angels are ready to greet you. The spirit is ready to come to you. Her flames are ready to touch you. Let those flames burn your skin. Let the spirit enter your soul. Let the angels embrace you. Father, you give us life. Jesus, you give us love. Spirit, you give wisdom. Holy Three, you give us yourself. Help us, O Holy One, to give our lives, to give our love, to give our minds, to give ourselves to you. Amen. Lord, we pray for those in need, the sick, the dying, the anxious, parents worrying about their children going back to university, all who are worrying about job security and seeking employment. Fill them with compassion that they may find strength in you as you draw them ever closer to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we commend all those who are in need of your prayer, known to you and to ourselves, as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.